Hello, I'm Logan Phillips and welcome to my vlog, or as we like to call it, The Vlogan. This is a vlog dedicated to people with special needs and those who love them. Welcome to another edition of Vlogan. I'm here with Ryan Cook. Uh, Ryan Cook is the executive director and uh, one of the owners of All Our Friends. So Ryan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's really cool to be a part of this. We started our organization back in 2009. My uncle had multiple disabilities. He was uh, needing a kidney transplant when he was nine years old. So he was a pretty typical child at that point. And when he went in for the, the kidney transplant, the doctor gave him an anti-rejection medication, but didn't chart it. And so then another doctor came in and gave him the same medication, uh, which is a really strong medication and put him into a three-day coma. And when he came out of that coma, he was legally blind. He could still see uh, colors and shapes and shadows, um, but he, vision was very poor. So he was legally blind and partially paralyzed. Uh, so he was using crutches for a while and then uh, went to a walker and then spent most of his life in a wheelchair after that. And then in 2001, he unfortunately passed away uh, from more medical complications while he was uh, traveling in Florida. Um, and there were some more medical errors, unfortunately, when he got to the hospital. But, but Ralphie was kind of the glue of our family. He was the, the life of the party. Our family would always get together for holidays to see Ralphie. And in our logo, all our friends, there's a, a capital R for the R. Uh, his name was Ralphie, and that was his legal signature was an R. And the uh, crayon drawing in our logo was the last picture he drew for my mother before he passed. He was the youngest of six. He had five older sisters, and my mother was the youngest of the five girls. And um, she was closest in age to him. And every year for their birthday and for Christmas, he would do crayon drawings with bright colors and uh, do the scribbles kind of like you see in our logo. Um, and that was the last picture he drew from my mother before he passed. So we really wanted to incorporate that in our logo. Um, and if you go on our website, you can see a picture of Ralphie and it talks about the artist. Um, it talks a little bit about his, his story and, and why All Our Friends was created. But when we created All Our Friends, we wanted a program that Ralphie would have enjoyed. So when he graduated high school, it was late 80s, early 90s. They only had like workshops. They didn't have day programs. And so putting pegs and boards and bolts and bags, that was really all they had to offer. And Ralph was, Ralphie was a really social guy and that was not for him. And so he really was all about making friends, but fortunately the Special Olympics was becoming a big thing at that time. Mm -hmm. So he met a lot of friends through his Special Olympics bowling. Um, and so that's why we have friends in the logo. So it's all Ralphie's friends and, and that's kind of how we got started. Awesome. Awesome. So tell it, tell uh, the viewers and the listeners what what is all our friends. I know you do day services, but what what else? And maybe even tell people what day services are. Sure. So we have six different day program locations around Columbus. Uh, we've got a Dublin, Gahanna, Grove City, Lewis Center, Upper Arlington, and Westerville locations. And uh, our day programs are really about helping individuals continue to learn after they graduate high school. So a lot of guys graduate from high school, and they might go on to get a job out in the community. And if they do, great. Um, but a lot of our guys are not there yet. They're not ready to work out in the community. They're still working on a lot of uh, different skills in order to get ready for that. And some guys, community employment just might not be in the cards for certain individuals. You know, their, their needs are such that they are, are more focused on um, improving their life skills, you know, learning how to tie their shoes on their own or zip up their jacket on their own. Um, and some individuals have a lot of physical limitations where we have to help them a lot. So we have two teams because we want to be able to work with everybody. So we've got a green team and a blue team at every one of our day program locations. Our blue team is the more independent group. Um, th that's the group where a lot of guys are already working out in the community and they come on the days they're not working. So they might work at Kroger, or Giant Eagle, Burger King. And then on the days that they're not working, they come to our day program because they want to socialize and have friends. And at, at work, their manager is always getting on them. Hey, this is not the time to talk. You're distracting the coworkers. You need to stay focused. And so they don't get a lot of socialization at their jobs. So when they come to our program, they can really get the socialization that they long for and go out and do fun things. We go out in the community two to three days per week. We'll go swimming, horseback riding, Clippers baseball games, the zoo, uh, the library, the grocery store. You were just um, down at Ohio State, right? Yeah, we just went to Ohio State. Uh, we were invited to go to a skills camp for our guys uh, where they got to run um, drills with actual Ohio State former former and current Buckeye players. Uh, they had some drills where we had like the rope where we had to lift and they had the, a, a drill where they had um, kind of like flag football where they were throwing the ball in the end zone and the guys 
had tackle dummies. They had to tackle a dummy, um, land on the mat and get the fumble. And so it was a really cool experience. Um, all of our guys are huge Buckeye fans. So uh, they got to do some of the chants and the drills. And uh, it so was a really one example. Fun. That's just one example of the things that uh, folks in the day day program do. Yeah, right. And so we do cool stuff all the time. Um, and then when we're in our centers, we're, we're working on skills, um, you know, math and money, reading and writing, computer skills. Um, but to go back to our blue and green team, our blue team uh, is that more independent group. And then our green team is, is uh, a group that is more focused on the life skills, like I talked about, zipping your coat up, tying your shoes, um, needing a lot more hands-on assistance. So we have a one to three staffing ratio on the green team. Uh, and then our blue team is more of a one to six staffing ratio. And then for the individuals who are wanting to be employed, who don't have jobs yet, we also have a supportive employment division and we will help those individuals build the skills necessary to get a job out into the community if that's what their goal is. So uh, if they have a goal of um, wanting to be a cashier, uh, then we got to practice math and money skills. We got to work on bagging the groceries because oftentimes cashiers anymore also have to bag. Uh, so we will work on those skills when we go to the grocery store. We'll go through the self-checkout and we'll practice those. But we have six different paid work crews in our supportive employment division. We have a landscaping crew where they do our landscaping and local businesses. Uh, we have a cleaning crew and a janitorial crew. We have a t-shirt crew. We make t-shirts for our own company and other companies out in the community. We have a gift shop where we make items that we sell out of our gift shop. There's a national quilting company where they put together how to quilt booklets with like stickers with a QR code that you can scan to go onto their website to see the videos. Um, so we put those together for them. And then we also have an office and clerical work crew. They do some data entry and um, they'll do uh, paper shredding and putting packets together. Um, but those are all paid uh, work opportunities and our job specialists work alongside them at all times. Uh, and then our third division is a supportive living division. So individuals, many of them get to a point where they're ready to move out of mom and dad's and they want to get their own apartment, get a roommate. So our staff go in and we're there 24 seven. We can help do everything that mom and dad do, take them to doctor's appointments, meal preparation, make their meals. Some of the individuals need assistance uh, bathing. So we'll help them. Other individuals are more independent and so they don't need that level of care. Um, but we'll take those individuals to the grocery store to get their groceries. Uh, so we really do everything that mom and dad do. Um, but that way, mom and dad can kind of retire and have their own time. And, and, and their son or daughter can get the experience that everybody you know has where, where they move out and get a roommate and move out of mom and dad's and kind of do their own thing at some point. Yeah. So let me ask you a question about the supported living. That doesn't have to be in an independent um, location. They could still be living with mom or dad or brother and have your your folks come in and, and provide support to them? That's correct. Uh, we do have some staff that go into their homes. I will say, you know, for our agency, those shifts are, are and I think for most agencies, those shifts are more difficult to fill because typically you'll have a family member who is wanting somebody to come in the home to help with like the, the morning routine, bathing and, and stuff and only for like an hour or two. And it's difficult to find a staff that is willing to drive across town to go do an hour or two hour shift yeah. to help somebody be ready in the morning. So you'll find in this field in general, those types of shifts are very difficult to find anybody that's able to fill, but uh, it is a service that we provide. It's just, we, we currently have a pretty extensive wait list for our supported living division as a whole, because um, there's just so much interest in, in us providing that service that unfortunately we've had to put a wait list in place for it. Yeah. Wow. So when I first met you seven or eight years ago, I think you, you, you were just a day services program. And I say just, um, but you, you, you mastered that and continue to grow that. But now you've added all of these other uh, elements to all our friends. It's just fabulous to have watched you grow and never heard a bad word from any of my clients about all our friends. Well, that's good. Uh, and if you do, I hope you would let us know, because we're always looking to, to improve our programming. But yeah, we've, we've worked together for I guess it has been that long now. Yeah, been that long. So, um, but yeah, when we, when we first started, it was just day program. We started out of our church in Westerville. We weren't sure how it was going to do, so we didn't want to have a commitment uh, with a lease or anything and, uh, in case it didn't work. And, and we've just been very blessed. Everything's gone very well for us. I, I was just thinking about, you know, how many vans did you have when you were at that Westerville location? Uh, we started We started with two. Uh, yeah. And that was a big deal. It was a big purchase for us. And then now behind you, I see, I, uh, you know, it looks like 40 of them up there. So yeah, uh, yeah we got about 40 now. Uh, yeah, 60 the, day program locations. Each one has five or seven vans. So yeah, it's wow. busy. 
Yeah, I mean, I like to say that you know um, programs like yours and um, and and companies like yours don't last if they're not doing a good job. And and the fact that yours is growing so much is just a real testament to to how wonderful uh, people think your program is. Yeah, well, we do get a lot of good feedback from families and, and uh, people that we've worked with over the years, like yourself. But we are always looking to improve and make things better. So we try not to get complacent. We try not to be satisfied. Um, with how we're running the program. And things are always changing too. Um, the state is always putting out new guidelines. They want us to focus more on employment or exploring all job opportunities before somebody goes into a day program. So we are constantly having to, to make changes to keep up with the times. And then also COVID was a very interesting time for us um, every, as it was for everybody, but we had to put up um, per, partitions like temporary partitions in our buildings and we had to separate our, our group. But one thing that we were really proud of was we didn't have to close our doors at all during COVID. We stayed open from day one um, because we have a lot of families that are essential staff. We have families that are doctors, firefighters, policemen, um, or even people that worked at grocery stores. And they didn't have the option to stay home and, and to be with their individual. So they didn't have an option. So for them, they were stressed because they're like, well, if all our friends closes, I don't know what I'm going to do because then I won't be able to go to work. And so we did our best early on to stay open for those families. Um, and then as restrictions started to change, uh, more families were feeling comfortable about their son or daughter coming back into our program. And we did have a, a few cases of COVID that happened, but um, because of the way we were doing our precautions with everybody wearing masks and staying six feet apart and not being able to cross over from one side of the building to the other and staying in small groups, we were able to keep all of those to isolated incidents where there'd only ever be one or two people. Uh, we never had like a mass outbreak at any of our locations where everybody was getting sick. So um, we were very fortunate and blessed to get through COVID with minimal impact to our program. Uh, we were able to retain every one of our staff. That was another big deal to wow. us. We didn't yeah. want to let anybody off. Uh, I know a lot of people were forced to do that. Um, we got really creative. Uh, it was a very stressful time for us, but one of our, we had a short list of our big goals uh, for COVID. And one was to stay open for our individuals. And one was to make sure we retain every single one of our staff, because we know in order to have a good program, we have to have good staff and to have good staff. You have to take care of them. And so we do everything we can to make sure our staff are, are always taken care of and that they have a peace of mind of knowing that their, their job is secure and, and they're not at risk of losing it. That's wonderful. So um, tell people how your services are paid for. Sure. So the vast majority of our individuals have Medicaid waivers. There is private pay options and there is county funding options as well, but those, those are pretty rare. Um, but those are, are some more options that people have. Uh, but most of our individuals have a Medicaid waiver and there's several different types. There's the IO waiver, the level one waiver, uh, the self waiver, and there's a waiver called the Ohio Home Care Waiver which we don't really work with that one, but we do work with IO level one and self waivers. Um, and those waivers take care of all the funding, the transportation to and from our program. It takes care of um, the day program itself, outings that we go on, it covers all of that. The only thing it doesn't cover is for those outings, if there's an admission, like we're going to the zoo, individuals will have to bring like $3 for their zoo admission. Um, we usually don't spend more than $10 in a week because we know people have budgets they have to keep to. Um, but we make that $10 go a long way. We do a lot of fun stuff with them. But yeah, the, the waivers are um, the main source of funding for everybody. Right. Waivers can take a long time to get on. Um, they, they claim that the wait list has gone away for waivers, but really I think they, they're they just changing the terminology. Now there's like an assessment they have to go through to see if they qualify. And then if they qualify, they go on a list where they have to wait. But, but it's a shorter call. list. Is what yeah, yeah, it's a shorter yeah. list. Yeah. So, so waivers are how a majority of your individuals are are covering the services. There also is county board funding, yep. and then there's self pay. And um, the 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 two um, the, the waiver and the county board funding that's something that they do with the county board and, and figure that out. Um, and then self pays obviously, um, you know, private pay. Um, right. And, and I think it's important to point out that a level one waiver does cover day services. I think a lot right. of people here, level one, they don't think they're getting a whole lot. And, you know, oh, you know, you hear the 5,300 some odd dollars to spend, but that's that $5,300 to spend is for other things on top of the day services and on top of the Medicaid card. So 
Oh, you know, when, whenever I hear people say we just have a level one, I say, well, you know, just a level one can do a whole lot, um, yeah. especially when an individual is out of high school. That's right. And I think that as far as day program is concerned, the level one waiver is identical to the IO waiver. It covers mm -hmm. the same Monday through Friday transportation, both ways, day programming, regardless of their staffing ratio. And then on top of that, like you said, they have that 5,300 or, or whatever it is for in-home supports for people to help or or for um, uh, communication devices or adapted equipment or, or things like that that they can use. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. So I, I know that you just opened a new location. So please tell people about that. And then if there's anything on the horizon that we should be looking for, uh, let us know before we close. Sure. So we just opened a new location in Grove City. Uh, Grove City seems to be a very happening area. We're right off the Stringtown Road exit. Um, our address is 1640 Buckeye Place. And you can find all of our locations on our website, allourfriends.com or allourfriends.info. Um, but we had been working on opening the Grove City location prior to COVID. So we'd already had the land purchase. We'd already had, uh, you know, all the uh, things we needed to, to get the building ready. We had the building contractor ready and we were just starting the process of getting all the permits and everything when COVID hit. Um, so the building was actually supposed to open like in the summer of 2020, but then when COVID hit, a lot of the construction got delayed uh, because some of the permits got delayed and it was just a real headache. So when we opened that, that was in December. Um, and every time we open a new location, it frees up spots at some of our other existing locations. So Upper Arlington and our Gehenna location were both at capacity. So we had a wait list for both locations. Uh, but we had individuals who lived in Canal Winchester and Obets who attended our Gehenna location and individuals who lived in Grove City and um, parts of uh, inner Columbus there uh, in Galloway who went to our Upper Arlington location. So when Grove City opened, a, a number of individuals from both Upper Arlington and Gehanna went to the new location, which freed up spots at both Upper Arlington and Gehanna as well. And then as far as future things to look for, we are in the process of phasing out all of our, our rented facilities and moving into our own privately constructed buildings. Uh, so currently, we are no longer in the church in Westerville. We moved into our own building that we constructed. Gehanna, we moved out of our leased space. We're in our own constructed building now. Uh, Grove City was a brand new build, so they went straight into a brand new building. Upper Arlington is currently um, being constructed right now, um, and that will be open in probably three to four months, and we'll move out of our existing Upper Arlington space into the brand new building. And Dublin is, is uh, right on their tail. So Dublin is, is going to start construction here in the next couple of months. Wow. And then, and then our Lewis Center location will be our last one where we have a rented space. Our lease will be up in 2023. So we'll probably be looking to build at some point for that one as well. Well, so are you, as the executive director, are you on all those meetings with contractors and stuff? Yes. Yes. So that's, it's not our, uh, our comfort area, I would say, uh, you know, technically we're, uh, into real estate now, um, but that's not what, what we're comfortable with or, or yeah. very familiar with. So it's been a learning process. But the idea of having our own buildings was so appealing because we could design it to really cater to our individuals. Like our sensory rooms have um, built-in swings from the ceiling now. And so when we built the building, we made sure the ceilings were reinforced in that part of the building so that it could hold the weight uh, we have our own laundry facilities inside, so we can work on that as a skill, but it's also helpful uh, to be able to wash our hand towels and stuff at, on site. And so uh, in the New Grove City location, we have a built-in putt-putt course. So there's hidden holes in the floor, and there's a magnet that pulls the hole out. We can put flags in, putt-putt. Wow. So every, it's just a very cool thing uh, to be able to do. And all of our doorways, so it's something as simple as a doorway you wouldn't think about in, in a typical office that you go into or any building typical doorway is 36 inches. Well, for our guys in wheelchairs, especially if they're self-propelled and they're, they're rolling their wheels, they hit their hands a lot on the doors because it's really tight. So all of our doors in our new buildings are, are 42 inches. That gives them an extra six inches. Um, and so things that, that a lot of people wouldn't typically think about, we've, we've made a lot of adaptions to our buildings to make it more um, accommodating to, to the population that we work with. Wow, that is awesome. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up for a tour of the Grove City location then. Yeah, for sure. You got to check it out. Um, and then Upper Arlington, all of our all of our buildings will have the putt putt courses soon because it's been a real big hit. So oh wow. Start. Now, so um, if somebody's interested in learning more about all our friends, if they go on the website, do they can they schedule a tour to come down and see if this is right for for themselves or for a loved one? 
So the only way to schedule a tour is to reach out to me. I schedule all the tours for all of our locations. Uh, people can email me or give me a call. Uh, my email is just ryan at allourfriends.com. That's all the letter R, friends.com. And then uh, my phone number um, is 614-795-7950. Awesome. That, that's just great. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on um, to the Logan. Um, I wanted to also, I, and I think it's just perfect that uh, your all's um, slogan or, or call line is that you measure your success in smiles. Is that right? That's right. And that's on all of our vans. It's in all of our buildings. Uh, and it's truly the motto that we live by. The more smiles we have, the, no, the better we know that we're doing a good job. And that's really all we care about. That's, that's really great. Well, you can tell that this is a family run business and, and one that, that uh, started for the right reasons um, and uh, just uh, is, is being hugely successful because of, of the reasons behind it. So thanks for all you're doing and thanks for coming on today. All right. Thanks for having me, Logan. And uh, you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Vlogan. Please like, share, and subscribe to the RRPG channel so you can stay up to date with some of the latest news in the disability community.